Hello, in this video, we're going to be investigating the exciting world of propagation of error. We're going to talk about how to calculate uncertainty when I have multiple values with uncertainty being added, subtracted, multiplied, divided, exponented, whatever you want. Uh, we will kind of go over all the rules here, so buckle in. All right, so for addition and subtraction, we're going to kind of look at a basic idea of where this comes from to get you in the mindset of why we do this and why it works. And then we'll kind of lay out the rules for everything. So if I want to add two values together, let's imagine I have two values that I've measured, two lengths, and I want to measure, a to I want to find a total length now. So I know my first, like whatever block is 10 centimeters with an uncertainty of two. My second block is six centimeters with a certainty of one. The new length I would think is going to be like 16-ish, but it's going to have some uncertainty. And I want to figure out how much uncertainty is there in my answer. One way we can do this, and honestly, a way that you can always do this if you don't have a rule, is I can think about the possible answers I would get. I can think about what's the biggest answer I could possibly get for this uh, function, and what's the smallest answer I could possibly get for this function. And I can go from there. What I mean by that is, uh, the largest possible answer we could expect is if the first value, which is 10 plus or minus 2, meaning I think it's as small as 8 or as big as 12, well, if that number was 12 and the second number was 7, both of them being the biggest they could be, that, mean, that would give me the biggest answer I could get, which would be 19 centimeters. Whereas I could do it the other way and say, what's the smallest answer I could get? Well, it would be 8 plus 5, that would be 13 centimeters. And the median is the value I would expect. Probably what I'm going to say is the length anyway uh, is 16, right? I just add the 10 and the 6. So I want to get all that into my answer. We can visualize that like this. And notice this looks a lot like an error bar. It really is an error bar. Um, the biggest value I could get is 19. The smallest value I could get is 13. The answer I expect, and then I'll probably report, is 16, but this shows me the whole spread. And I think we can see here that I end up with 16 plus or minus 3, right? It goes 16 plus 3 is 19, 16 minus 3 is 13. That seems to cover the spread, get into account the largest and smallest answers I could expect. You might notice 3 is a combination of 1 and 2. Right, so I end up with 16 plus or minus 3 centimeters, and it does look like these two uncertainties are somehow combining to give me that. Uh, so that's a way you can picture how we get here when we add values together and find an uncertainty for them. We're going to generalize that to a rule, so you don't have to do it that way every time. And here's the rule. If you add two values together, or if you subtract two values together, the new uncertainty is the sum of the individual absolute uncertainties. This is what it looks like in your data booklet, which can be confusing. It's a little weird the way that they put this. When they have this plus or minus, they don't mean an uncertainty thing. They mean if y is a plus b or if y is a minus b. So they're trying to say if there's addition or subtraction in the thing that you're doing. If you're calculating a value y and you have to add two other things together or have to subtract two other things together, then the uncertainty in the calculated value, the uncertainty in y, is the uncertainty of a plus the uncertainty of b. All right, notice that works for addition and subtraction, which is weird. You don't subtract the uncertainties if, you, if you're doing a subtraction problem, you still add them. Uh, so let's look at this one. Let's say I have two times, I time two events and I want to find the total time. Uh, this is how this would work out, All right. The good news is math doesn't change. The rules of math don't change. If I want to add 3.04 plus 9.08, I'm going to get 12.12 .12 with or without, without uncertainty. So whenever you're doing a, a math problem where there's uncertainty, just do the math part first and then worry about the uncertainty later. So you can just ignore the uncertainty for a second, add the two numbers together, that's what you're going to get here because we're just doing an addition problem. Then this part I have to figure out with my uncertainty rules. Since it's an addition problem, I'm going to take the absolute uncertainty of the first term, 
added to the absolute uncertainty of the second term, 0.03 plus 0.05 is 0.08. Where it gets weird is with subtraction. 15 minus 9. You can try this with the biggest and smallest answer rule. Just keep in mind it's the biggest and smallest answer that you're looking for. But what I'm going to get is 15 minus 9 is 6. And 2 plus 1 is 3. I still add those uncertainties together. So I end up with 6 plus or minus 3 centimeters. Notice this means subtraction gives me a much bigger uncertainty percentage-wise if all other things are equal. And when you're designing an experiment, that is something to keep in mind. If I have to subtract two measured values, that really increases the uncertainty of the answer. And that's just kind of a, a, a consequence of how the math works. All right, but so that's the rule. Addition and subtraction, the same rule. Uh, you get this in your data book, so you just need to be able to interpret that. All right, there's also a rule for multiplication and division. This, deriving this is a little more complicated, and we're kind of using a simplified version here. It is plenty good enough for everything that we'll ever do in IB. There are resources on Schoology you can take a look at if you're curious uh, about where this comes from and some more involved methods that you can look at too, but this is perfectly good for everything we're ever going to do. And the rule is if we're going to multiply or divide things, we add their fractional uncertainties together. So addition and subtracted, we added the absolute uncertainties here. We add the fractional uncertainties. All right, so this is what this looks like in the data booklet. Again, they give you this rule. Again, it's kind of confusing because they say if y equals a, b over c. All they're saying is if I have multiplication or division, right? This is a times b divided by c. And they're shown here just like addition and subtraction. It doesn't matter if it's a multiplication or division. In any case, I take the fractional uncertainty of each term and add them together. And that gives me the fractional uncertainty of my calculated value. All right, so let's look at some. I can multiply 15 by 9. Let's say they both have uncertainties, 15 plus or minus 2, uh, 9 plus or minus 1. Well, same thing. I'm just going to do 15 times 9 first, and then I'm going to deal with my uncertainty. Um, so let's deal with the uncertainty here. The way this will work is the fractional uncertainty of my answer, which we're saying x is what I get when I multiply these two things together. So the fractional uncertainty of x, delta x over x, would be the fractional uncertainty of the first term, where I take my absolute uncertainty, divide by the value, so 2 out of 15, plus the fractional uncertainty of the second term. 2 out of 15 plus 1 out of 9 is 0.244444444, forever and ever and ever, if you put that in your calculator. All right, so like 24%, give or take. And of course, if I just want x, the value, it's 135 square centimeters since I'm multiplying 15 centimeters by 9 centimeters. Uh, so I could say 135 centimeters plus or minus 24.4444444%. Uh, remember what a percent uncertainty is. We always want to present absolute uncertainties with their answers. All right, so since this is a, a fractional uncertainty, it means there's an uncertainty of 24% of the value. So I'm going to take that percentage. You can think of this like an equation and, you know, like solve it for the absolute uncertainty, which really just shows you all we're doing is we're taking 24% of the value. Right, 24% of 135 gives me 32.9 repeating. So that would be the absolute uncertainty. So when all is said and done, I have 135 plus or minus 32.99999 centimeters squared. And that would be how I propagate the error for this problem. Now you might be looking at this, hopefully you're looking at this and thinking that this is a little ridiculous to have a infinite number of decimals in my uncertainty. You know, I don't, I, I don't know what's happening with the tens plays. I don't know if this is like, you know, uh, 135 or 145 or 165. So it kind of seems silly to go here. So we have some rules about how we round these things that we'll go over. And the rule is that I'm going to round all of my experimental uncertainty to one significant figure. 
So anytime you ever, ever, ever present an uncertainty, it should have one sig fig. It should never have more than one sig fig. Um, and then I'm gonna round my values to match. So we'll, we'll look at what that looks like. Um, here's a couple examples to kind of get you in the, in the groove of how this works. Um, so let's say I have an uncertainty of 0.3 inches. You would, this is sort of the second rule where I want to round my measured value to the place value. My uncertainty is in the tenths place, so I need to round my value to the tenths place. All right, it's kind of crazy to say 3.085 if I don't know what this number is, right? This could be anywhere between like 2.7 and 3.3, so why would I talk about this number out here? It's, it's crazy. So we round this to the place where the uncertainty is. All right, so you show your value until you get to the place where the uncertainty is, and then you stop. That's where you round. All right, so that's what this rule is about. And it's because if, if I'm uncertain here, there's no point in me going beyond that. All right, it's meaningless. Here's another version where I have 0 0.037 seconds as my uncertainty. I need to round that to one significant figure. All right, one significant figure is the rule for my uncertainties. So that's got to be 0.04 seconds and then I come over here and the reason we do that is because this value is literally 10 times less meaningful than this value that's how places work so if I don't know this number it really doesn't matter what's happening here and especially doesn't happen matter what's happening in the next couple places so we stick with one significant figure so we round this to one sig fig and then we round the number to the place, in this case, the hundredths place, uh, as we're around this too. All right, so let's go back to the one that we looked at and you can pause it and try this and make sure that you can do it. Okay, wonderful job. Uh, but so let's look at this. Um, I wanna first round my uncertainty to one sig fig because this is crazy. And when I do that, I get 30. 30 is the uncertainty here. 30 square centimeters. Now I need to follow the second rule. And this tends to like make students uncomfortable or something. I don't know. Uh, I think it's because you're okay with this when it's decimals, but for whatever reason, when it's like a tens, it seems a lot weirder. Uh, and it does seem weirder, but it's the same rule. I don't know anything about the uh, after the tens place. So I have to round my on my value to the tens place. So this has to be rounded to 140. Again, because I don't know if this is closer to 100 or 160. So why would I bother talking about the five? All right. So I round this to the tens place, and the way I represent this is 140 plus or minus 30 square centimeters. Um, this is a big uncertainty, and that's why I have to round this here. But because my uncertainty is so big, I can't talk about the ones place. I have to round that information away or else I'm kind of lying about how well I know this information. And that would be bad. It is totally fine to have a big uncertainty if that's what your experiment gave you. That is way better than just fudging it and, you know, trying to show more decimals than you can justify based on the way you took uh, your, your data. All right, so 140 plus or minus 30 would be the uncertainty here. Um, all right, I will point out there is one exception to this rule, the one sig fig rule. Uh, it's pretty specific. Um, and honestly, if you always stick to this rule, you'll be fine. So you can always, always, always use this rule uh, and you'll be good. There is an exception though, where if the Uncertainty, if the first digit in your uncertainty is a one, you can leave two significant figures. So the idea is if you had an uncertainty of like 0.14 seconds, you could argue that you lose a lot of information by rounding that to 0.1 seconds. All right, like percentage wise, that's a big deal. So you can leave it as 0.14 seconds. Uh, so you can leave two sig figs in your uncertainty if the leading digit is a one, but that's a very special case. And again, if you just ignore that and always round everything to one sig fig anyway, you're fine. So I would encourage you to just, uh, as a blanket statement, always round all your uncertainties to one significant figure.
All right, just a few other special cases that are really just extensions of the rules we just did. Um, first is what happens when you multiply by a constant, a number that doesn't have uncertainty. The kind of rule here is that it just gets multiplied by the same factor. So for example, if we had, uh, if we had a measured value of time that we were multiplying by five, and that's like the number five, the math number five, we just multiply the uncertainty by the same factor. Two ways you can think of this. You could think of it, this isn't quite exactly math right, but you can think of it like we're distributing. We multiply this by five and we also multiply the uncertainty by five. Get the answer. The other way to think of it is in terms of the multiplication rule, which is I'm multiplying two values together, but the first one has no uncertainty. It's got 0% uncertainty because it's just a mathematical number. Well, then I have 0% uncertainty plus the percent uncertainty of this. My answer must have the same percent uncertainty as this value. So I still need the uncertainty to be the same percentage of the value as it was here. So that's why they both get scaled up by the same factor. And the other one is a power. And a power is another one that's really just a multiplication rule. If I think of like x squared, right, that's x times x. So I would take the percentage uncertainty of x add it to the percentage uncertainty of x. In other words, I have doubled the percentage uncertainty of x. If I had x cubed, x times x times x, percent uncertainty of x added together three times, you get three times the percent uncertainty of x. Uh, in other words, the rule is this. This is how the data booklet will write it. Um, and you can see if we raise a value to a power, the uncertainty in the answer is the power times the uh, percent uncertainty of the of the value. So again, it's just an extension of the multiplication rule. It's really helpful though when you have like a square root, which is a one half power, and you can't do it as intuitively as like a squared. Um, so that's in your data booklet along with the addition and subtraction and multiplication and division rules. So you can and will use those many, many times as you go forward. You now have the power to propagate uncertainty and find uncertainty in calculated values. And if you ever find that you need more, uh, if those rules don't quite cut it for you, there is a, a material on Schoology uh, that you can use, the Error Analysis Manual. Um, it has some special cases and some uh, more detailed versions. It'll go into a little bit of where the multiplication rule comes from, that kind of stuff. You, The rules in the data book will get you through pretty much everything you'll ever see in IB Physics. So those are good enough for our purposes for what we're doing. But if you're ever curious or you find yourself in a weird situation with like a lab you designed or something, you can always check online. There are many, many, many more rules uh, in the world of uncertainty, uh, but these are plenty to get us started and get us calculating uncertainty. So have fun.